Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 77. This episode is writer, director, editor, visual effects artist, Brittany Joyner, who is awesome. Brittany and I met, uh, actually, she was the one who casted me in the Star Wars fan film I was in, Scoundrels, which kind of is a, is a nice little coincidence that she's number 77. For all you Star Wars fans, if you're picking up what I'm laying down. But she was super, super fun to, to chat with. And uh, she's got some great stories about um, editing and how that side of post-production works. We talk about how she got into uh, the industry as well as where her love of movie making started. She also breaks down effects and, uh, and production of her previous films, which is amazing. She's done a Stranger Things fan film, which is phenomenal. She did a Harry Potter fan film that was actually shot at Harry Potter World. All gorilla style. Great stories behind that. And then uh, we both reminisce and talk about how Scoundrels came to be. And a lot of behind-the-scenes goodness uh, we break down on that. And it was just super fun. It was really, really cool. You guys are going to love her because she's awesome. So without further ado, please enjoy the interesting podcast, episode number 77, with Brittany Joyner. Theme song time. <laughs> Not a whole lot. How you doing today? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I just got back from the eye doctor, so I got like a new contact. Oh, it's nice. Like, it's like thicker and weird. <laughs> yeah? It's for my astigmatism. I didn't know that I didn't have contacts for that. Oh. Yeah. Contacts so like, terrify me. It's like ra- more rounded. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's is weird. It dif- is it more difficult to put in? Not more difficult to put in. It just feels weird. I'm not used to it yet. I believe it. I've never put contacts in, but I feel like... So you obviously can't feel them when you blink, right? No. Sometimes you can feel and see them move. Like they get, But you get used to it. Like, I can touch my eye. Look at this. That's so gross. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm way too scared to put things in my eye and, like, to take them out and stuff. And, no, I'm a pro. I don't Ugh. give a shit. <laughs> yeah, you've, you've got a lot of practice, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, how's uh, your day's going well? Eye doctor, so. The, yeah. The, the most frustrating thing in the world, do they still do the eye test thing? When, the, when you, yeah, when the, they're like uh, one or two? Oh, yeah, one, they still do that. But two. I've gone to my same doctor since I was like little, like eight years old or whatever. Uh-huh. She told me that um, she knows which answer you're supposed to choose. Oh, so, like, what? There's correct yeah. answers? Yeah, so that she does. So like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> what? Yeah. Wow. I asked her. I was like, "So how do you know, like, wh- if if I'm giving you the right answers?" And she's like, I "Already have the answers." <laughs> so there's totally wrong answers to this. Yeah, and they're like, I guess they're like testing you. What? Yeah. As if I didn't have anxiety about it enough already. Right. My <laughs> God, I didn't know that at all. Yeah. Yeah, I'm always like, it's like one, or two. I'm like, uh, one, um, or two. Okay, two. Two or three? I was like, damn it, how many are there? It took me forever <laughs> to do one to two. No, I'm always like, ah, oh, am I choosing the right one? Am I choosing the right one? Which one's, what if I fuck it up? Is exactly. my vision going to be bad? <laughs> exactly. Be like, I don't know. I know, right? <laughs> if I say the wrong one and they give me glasses that don't work, but I have to pretend that they work, but they right. don't, which defeats the whole purpose of all of this. I know. And then, and then you pay for glasses or, like, you got you got your glasses for the year and you're like, damn it, these don't work. Right? Oh my God. But Just whatever. so stressful. So are hey, you, are you like still shit in Florida? Coming through here, through this, this computer? No, you sound good. I can hear you fine. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah I'm still in Florida. Um... I just need a break from LA. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you at uh, all. But yeah, we went on a vacation as a family. Like, uh, la- actually, we got back two days ago. Oh, right on. Where'd like, you go? We went to Pigeon Forge. Sweet. It was cool, but like, we wanted it to snow, and it snowed like, like the bare minimum of snow. We're like, yeah, that's snow. Not really. <laughs> yeah. but there's, snow. there's a but little bit of like, white. 
it rained and it was like super cold the whole time. So like we didn't want to go do anything. <laughs> no, I don't blame you. I don't blame yeah, you at so all. Yeah, it kind of sucked, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so are you from Florida? Yeah, I'm from Jacksonville. Really? Recording right now? Maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? <laughs> I make this stuff up on the fly. Really? <laughs> yeah, 100%. I thought you were, like, all the podcasts I've done, they, we've, like, chatted before, and then I'm like, you ready to go? All right, boop. No. No. Not Damn. this show. <laughs> Don't put all that shit in there about <laughs> eye doctors and shit. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think this show is? <laughs> you, the, I don't know. What else do I say? Did I say anything else weird? <laughs> no. Oh, it's going to get way weirder. Trust me. Oh, shit. This is my show. It's literally just talking about nothing for forever. It's Damn. awesome. No, the other ones are, like, way more structured. <laughs> None of my shows are structured because I'm interested. In, so the way that I put it, so I have the interesting podcast, and then I have the hype show. The hype show is a patron exclusive. The interesting podcast is the main show, my flagship, if you will. Yes. And the interesting podcast is about the person. The hype okay. show is about something that they like. So oh, it's just so literally all to, just getting so to know to... people. I'm just saying there's different formats as far as the way my okay. shows go. And the interesting podcast okay. is about the person. So this is just about you and life and, like, how you got into the stuff you're into and just chilling. That's why it's great because everybody likes talking about themselves, right? I mean, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> you you would be surprised. Really? Uh, I like talking about myself because no one ever wants to hear about me. I so do. Like... <laughs> that's the whole – that's literally the purpose of my show is to have people on that I think deserve more of the spotlight but aren't getting it. I give a microphone to those people. Hence the reason I've had a ton of creature performers on and people from Star Wars that were in the aliens and visual effects artists and stuff. And Yeah. Yeah, it's, what I, it's the service that I provide. But it's the interesting podcast, so, like, really anyone interesting can be on it. That's exactly it, yeah. That's, yeah. The, that's the tagline. The interesting podcast is a podcast where I talk to someone whom I find interesting. That's it. Yeah. So I've had, like, tattoo artists on. I've had, like, just random people that I'm like, I think you're very interesting. Let's talk for a little bit. Let me get to know you. Dude, I think that's what I like about uh, Joe Rogan. Cause, like, he just I talks love about Joe Rogan. Dude, I, I've been watching, like, um, like I'll, I'll research or I'll, I'll YouTube, like, Joe Rogan conspiracy theories. And I'll watch yeah. all the conspiracy <laughs> And I started doing that with Joey Diaz, too. Joey, do you oh, it's crazy. Stories? Yeah. Dude, with all the cocaine stories. <laughs> that dude is bonkers. <laughs> dude, I gotta tell you something, Joe Rogan. <laughs> Dude, I've been really into Theo Vaughn, too. Have you heard Same. Of Same. No joke. Within the last three weeks, I was like, he's got a podcast of his own? Went all the Dude. way back. Yeah. Dude, what is is everyone – was there, like, some push of publicity about Theo Vaughn, like, yep. that everyone's not watching him? He – I think it's the fact that he's been uh, – because he's friends with that group. So, like, Joe Rogan, uh, Brian Callen, Brendan Schaub, Andrew yeah. Santino now. And they're all going on each other's podcast. Yeah. So, when you like one, you're like, oh, he was on the show. I'm going to listen to his. And it just – that's just yeah. how the game is played. You know what's really cool is um, the – I don't think it's the last podcast Joey did because I think he released one like today or yesterday. Mm -hmm. The podcast before that, he had a comedian on co named Carmen Morales. Do you know Carmen Morales? I do not. She's Talk from me. Orlando. Oh, what? I, I, don't know, I don't know her personally or anything, but I sure. listened to you, the Tom and Dan show, which are like the two guys from Monsters in the Morning. If yeah. You yeah. Remember those guys? Mm -hmm. Um, and she started coming on there and I was like, damn, she's funny, but I didn't start following her or anything, mm -hmm. but I knew she'd moved to LA. And then all of a sudden, lo and behold, I start listening to Joey Diaz and who pops up? Karma Morales is on Joey Diaz. And I'm like, Whoa. Oh my God, dude, someone from Orlando is like killing it. Right. Right. I just found out the other day that, uh, uh, Sarah Paulson is from Tampa. No way. Yeah. Dude. I never knew that Burt Reynolds was from Florida. Is he? Yeah, I think. What? I'm pretty sure. Should I Google this? Yes. So I don't look stupid? Okay. <laughs> I, look, I look stupid all the time. That's why I'm in the show. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So. Oh, here we go. Reynolds was born in Lansing, Michigan. He died in Jupiter, Florida. Okay, so you're ha you, the wrong end. Yeah, he's not from there, but I think he, like, moved there. He died here. Yeah. <laughs> so you just, you just flip-flop the ends from birth to yeah. death. You're like, he was... Something significant with Burt Randall's happened in Florida. But I think, I, I guess when I said from, it's like, I guess that I now say I'm from L.A. Like, oh, that's I'm a not good point. from L.A. Right. Yeah. I talk to a lot of people about that because I, I'm i from North Carolina, but I have been down here since I was six. But I tell yeah. everyone I'm from North Carolina. Yeah. Which is weird. Yeah, you told me that. Yeah, it's Wait, so strange. You've been down here since you were six. Yeah, so like 20, almost 22 years I've been here. But I still say I'm from North Carolina. 
Wait, but you should say you're from Florida. Florida. I should, that's yeah. That's all you know. That's, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. I, I've spent a majority of my life here. But, I mean, I go back to North Carolina, like, every year. So I still know everything there. And, like, it's very familiar. And I I guess I I've, uh, connect more with people from North Carolina as opposed yep. to people in Naples, Florida. Yeah, what? So, cause Dude, Na- Naples, yeah, well, <laughs> Naples is home of the newlywed and the nearly dead. Um, oh, yeah. So it's a ton yeah. of old people. Down there. Yeah. And, like, to go from living on a farm to living near the beach, it's like, I don't, where are the trees? What's happening? I don't know. <laughs> so it's Do you like that, like, mountain farm boy? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm way more country than I appear to be. Yeah. <sighs> See, I'm pretty country, too, but, like, I can't put my finger on it like i am from florida so i guess i'm like swampy country but like my grandparents were from all my grandparents were from georgia so that's more like kind of like carolina yeah that's true but i've never felt at home in florida like i did in orlando like a little bit i started to feel at home but Mm -hmm. like there were a lot of things that like made that not really my home and i totally and it might be newlywed syndrome because i just moved to la like three years ago but i feel like la is like that's my town, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> sure. It makes sense, especially you being a creator. Because I, I went to L.A. for like two weeks a few years ago. And the one, the biggest thing I took from it was everyone in that town is working on something. So it's a yeah. very, it's just a creative atmosphere where like you go into Starbucks and there's 15 people working on screenplays. And you're like, what is, what is this? You See, know? that's the argument to people moving to L.A. I feel like you, you are, when you're in L.A. or New York or London or even like Vancouver and Atlanta... Like, you are thrust into this environment where everyone is doing it. All your friends are doing it. The people you meet in the the grocery store are doing it. The people you meet at the coffee shop are doing it. The people you're working with are doing it. And, like, you are forced to do this thing. And, like, even if you go there and you do the bare minimum, you're in it more than anyone else, right? Sure. Like, you're, you're, like, that's all you can do. So I feel like being in L.A., I've given myself the only option to succeed you know what i'm saying like that's the only option like i don't have a backup and like moving out of orlando gave that like took that backup away because i worked at the golf channel i was like well you can always work at the golf channel yeah right and it's like no i don't want to always work at the golf channel i'm gonna and like i'm gonna take that away from me so that i have to do this thing you know what i mean it makes sense that's i mean that is definitely the biggest benefit is that it's it's right in front of you you don't have to go looking for it uh yes. for sure for sure if you, you put yourself at the table to work with you know <laughs> exactly exactly and you there's so many options there as well yeah uh yeah no it's it's definitely makes it more accessible for yeah. sure for sure well, i mean what are your thoughts on like staying like what are your did we ever talk about that i don't think so i uh so hmm. what's your plans what's your well this is me interviewing you <laughs> yeah exactly i never talk about myself on this so i'll try to skirt around your answer by not answering it wait you don't you don't edit this uh, very rarely i i edit <laughs> things like <laughs> like i edit levels to make sure that everything's okay and it's not blowing out people's ears if there's stuff that doesn't land or things that people have said that they like mention something in a movie that hasn't come out yet and we have to oh we can't do that yet i'll take that out but otherwise yeah. it's just free flowing man it's cool so, oh man i had a question for you before for you it. Um, I can't remember it, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> That's good. So how long did you live in Orlando, then? You said you were born in Jacksonville, but then you were in okay. Orlando. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want me to give the life story? Is yeah, that of what... course. Why do you think we're here? <laughs> I want to get to know you. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Actually, I wanted to talk to you about, because like, this, it's not, you're, this is not a Star Wars podcast, Correct. obviously. But, like, Star Wars is on here a lot. So, Absolutely. like, I figured we'd talk about Star Wars a of lot. Of course. And I wanted to tell a story about Star Wars that I've never told anywhere else. Oh, <laughs> man. Exclusive. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. And it's very early on in my life, so I guess I'll just jump right into it. So, I, yeah, I was born and raised in Jacksonville, and I, like, went to school here. My family, like, owns their own business, and they, they're still doing that right now. I just have to deal with that bullshit right now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and like I come from like a musical family. Like my brother plays guitar. My um, my grandpa used to play stand up bass in an old oh, country what? western swing band. Right on. Oh, when I dude, when my grandpa died, I found out that my the way he and my grandmother met was 
his band was playing a show, and my grandma was the guitar player's girlfriend. What? And so he came, <laughs> so he came to the show. She came to the show and watched the band and left with my grandpa. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> That's baller, right? <laughs> it's, it's the stand-up bass, man. They just know. Yeah. He's just laying the bass down. Just slapping the bass. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what else? Uh... <laughs> that's pretty nuts, though. So you came from a family of musicians, which means it's got to be a creative atmosphere. Do you think that's why you got into movies? Yeah, but I, th- I feel like I got into it because, like, um, I guess this is, like, getting all, like, spiritual and stuff. Yeah, of like, course. I'm not, I'm not, like, totally spiritual, but I and I, cool. I hate, and I do believe that things are totally random in mm-hmm. the world, right? Sure. But, like, there's been certain things in my life that, like, happened, and I'm like, man, there's no way. That's right? Just, right? So it's like, there's something. Something's yeah. going on. So, like, I went, to, I went to an art school, and I, pl- like, I auditioned to play classical guitar. But, like, during that, there was a TV and film program, and I was like, oh, I want to try that. So I, like, got in for music and then left with a TV film. Back. Really? Yeah. And then same thing for music. So, like... I played music, I played it in bands my whole life, and then, like, I started playing band- in bands in college with my friend Turtle and stuff, and, like, it wasn't working. Nothing was working. Our bands always fell apart. They always sucked. We could never find anyone to play with us. Mm-hmm. But, like, we always made videos, and those were always the things that were the most successful. So, like, when you watch our channel, mm-hmm. the beginning of our channel, Big City Sent Out channel, is, like us trying to put out vlogs for our band but what makes those vlogs cool is not the band (laughs) it was like us and we were doing this in like 2008 2009 like way before vlogging right yeah and we're doing the vlogging thing then sure but like no one knew what we were doing that like we didn't youtube didn't care so like we didn't get very many views or whatever right but once we figured out that like we were better at that i like dove back into film and, like, was, like, forget the music part, right? Right. And I haven't picked up a guitar since then. But, like, with film, it's always worse. Like, as soon as I made up my mind that I was going to quit the band and do film, I got internships. I did two internships at once. And then I started working at Golf Channel. And then from Golf Channel, I worked at ILM. And then I moved to L.A. And, like, this, these things just, like, exponentially grew. Yeah. And I was like, well, I come from a musical family, but, like, that's not working for me, you know? Sure, sure. It was the gateway to get you into film because the music yeah. got you into the program, which was adjacent to the film. This is, See, this is the other service that I provide is <laughs> I, I uncover threads in your life that make sense. You're like, oh, this led to this. and lo- Wow, <laughs> look at that. I know, right? It's crazy. Th- that's nuts. So do you, you played guitar? Yeah, I played guitar. Right on. I cannot play guitar. I tried. It's too many strings. I feel like I probably can't play now. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, every guitarist says that. It's like, I don't know if I could. I don't <laughs> And then they just riff. <laughs> I, I tried for a while. I played bass for like three years. And I was like, all right, four strings I can handle. Six ba- is, bass is too cool. many. I I've can... been listening to this band called Wolfpack. Have you ever heard of this band? Wolfpack? Yeah. Well, it's with a V. Oh, Wolfpack. Wolfpack. But they're like a jazz band from like what? upstate New York. <laughs> And it's just, like, a bunch of Jewish white boys, like, jamming out jazz music. And they are the best, man. <laughs> what? That sounds amazing. Yeah, dude. I went Their through bass a... player is, like, one of the best bass players in the world right now. <laughs> really? I went through yeah. a Youngblood brass band uh, phase for a while. Really? You got it. If anyone hasn't, you got to check them out. They're phenomenal. <laughs> There's a tuba player that beatboxes while playing tuba. And it's what? like, it, it makes sounds that for the, uh, the longest time I was like, I don't even know what that is. And then I looked it up and yeah, it's a tuba and it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's so good. Young Blood Brass Band. All right. Yeah. I'll check it out. It's I really got band. into the Postmodern Jukebox on, right on. on YouTube. That's awesome. That's awesome. I don't know if they're related, but the names sounded the same. So Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'll give it to you. <laughs> so what was the first, what, what was, <laughs> what was the golf channel like? <laughs> Oh, what did you do there? I was a – I worked in this department that, like, had two separate titles, but we did the same job. So, like, when I worked at Golf Channel, I was a digital media transfer operator, and then I went to ILM, and then I came back to Golf Channel for a year, did the same job, and was called an encodist. <laughs> oh. What yeah. is it? I don't even know what that is. 
So, like, Golf Channel, they do a lot in feeds, right? Because golf is, like, fed in from the course every day. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I still don't own, understand a lot of it because they shoot some of their shows in feeds sometimes. But, like, it's basically like what I do now, like, in my day job. Um, mm-hmm. We're, like, assistant editor. So, like, footage comes in. We ingest it into the Avid. We, like, QC it, get it ready for the editors so that they can edit with it. And then we do, like, all the exports to air and stuff like that. And all the archives, too. Gotcha. Yeah, like, when I started, this is, like, something I always talk about in interviews, and it impresses. It probably won't impress anybody here, but in <laughs> interviews, people are like, oh, my God, that's so cool. So, like, when I started Golf Channel, they were trying to move from tape base to digital base. Mm-hmm. So they had every golf tournament from since 1995 on a tape. Oh my god, it's so cool. Yeah, they're every day, right, for four days. What? (laughs) So we would have to ingest literally thousands of these tapes every day and, and like, to keep them rolling so that they were in a digital format now so that they would just search for the clip, boom, and there it was. Because before that, they'd be like, we need this clip, and I'd have to go get the tape, put the tape in, set the in and out points, and then, like, record that section and then put the tape back. It was so boring. But, like, the cool part is we had this – we had this giant robot that we just loaded. It was it had four sides. It held 15 tapes. Mm-hmm. And you just load the tapes in, and there's, like, six decks, like, video, like, VCRs. Oh. And a robot would literally, like, reach in, grab a tape, put it down, put it in the deck, rewind it, record the whole tape through, like, what? four or five hours of media. <laughs> the, the, serial pro, the Siri prototype was actually at the Golf Channel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. What, and then they brought it? these little, like, LTO tapes, which is, like, an, archi- an archive thing. Like, every show in L.A., too, is stored on that little LTO tape. Oh. And then you just archive those. Um, and then, like, if they needed it, I would just go grab that tape. So, actually, it's in digital format, but it's actually the same thing. I go grab a tape, I put it oh. on my seat. <laughs> <laughs> Man. So, did you name the robot? Because I would have. What? Did you name the robot? Because I would have. No, it was just called the Sama Robot because that was the company that made it. <laughs> okay, that's kind of cool, though. That's not bad. <laughs> that's not bad. Sam for short. I just, I just told a, a really boring story on a podcast called The Interesting Podcast. <laughs> that's the thing. I find it interesting, and uh, it's my show. So, haha. <laughs> so, Let me say shout-outs to my uh, Golf Channel DTC crew. Yeah. Yo, Kyle, I just texted you. Text me back, dog. Yeah, <laughs> Kyle. And tell the robot I said hi. <laughs> yeah, he's still there. What a loser. Yeah, Kyle. What a loser I mean that the robot. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to name the robot Kyle, starting right now. Oh, hell yeah. I'm going to send this to all of his coworkers. Good. Good. <laughs> hi, Kyle. I think you're great. So how long did you do that? Um, well, I think to answer your first question, did I answer your question, like, how long I was in Orlando? I don't remember what the question was. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I was at Golf Channel for, like, four years. Wow. But I moved to Orlando, like, right out of college. Or right out of college. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is why you got to edit this shit, dude, because I say stupid stuff. <laughs> no, you haven't even scratched the surface. <laughs> I'll show you stupid. <laughs> right out of high school, I moved there because everyone was like, hey, Valencia Community College is the number two film school in the country. Oh, yeah. Which is not the case. <laughs> oh, yes. No, I, I, I almost went to full sale. I, I hear you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, mm. So, like, I went there and hated it. And then I and then I was like, fuck this. I'm going to just get my degree and go to UCF or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what I was doing, man. I knew what I wanted to do back then, but I was just so hard-headed and just wanted to party all the time. Hell, <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I could be a millionaire right now. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> if only. Uh, sometimes I think about, like, uh, I'm like, okay, I am I am this old, and Taylor Swift is the same age. Oh God! Oh, God. I hate those. Yeah, so I'm like, and then, you, just... and then you see those things. It's like Harrison Ford didn't get Star Wars until he was thirty, and I'm like, shit, I'm thirty four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like that. I was like, Morgan Freeman didn't start till his sixty, so there's there's time. There's yeah, you're time. like, yeah, I can just be the next Morgan Freeman. Yeah, you exactly. Got this. <laughs> yeah. It's so possible. <laughs> so when you so when you jumped from the music program to the film program, what did that film program entail? Um, I had to do, like, Film 101, where we watched Star Wars, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> um, I had to do a screenwriting class. Uh, I can't remember the other stuff. Then it was, like, Film 102 and stuff. But I do remember that, like, I was, like, making films 
And, like, I remember they were like, oh, you got to make a film project. And I was like, cool, I have, like, six of them that I made this year. Which one do you, Which one will I get a better grade on? Yeah, for <laughs> sure. You know, like, I do remember that. Because um, me and my friends would, like, always go and record stuff. And, like, the kid who taught me how to edit was this, like, 16-year-old kid. He was a grade below me. His name was Chris. And he taught me to edit on Final Cut Pro. So this oh, kid's sweet. a year younger than me, teaching me how to edit on Final Cut Pro. Editing, like, skateboarding videos. Uh, I remember, like, I went into his house, and he just had a mattress on the floor, and his <laughs> Mac. Like a and, true like, artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, he came from a poor family. <laughs> uh, well, he still made the best. He taught you to edit. Had, <laughs> but he had a Mac with, like, Final Cut Pro on it. And he taught me how to edit. And, like. That's I awesome. I know, right? Just some random punk rock kid. Do you still edit on Final Cut? Hell no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, like, when Final Cut 10 came out, I was, like, in that point of my life where I was, like, giving up music and moving into film. And I, like, downloaded Final Cut 10, and I was like, oh, my God. This program is completely different. Like, I can't edit anymore. Holy shit. And I, like, freaked out and was like, I can't, I can't be in film anymore. But then I downloaded Premiere, and I was like, oh, it's the same thing as Final Cut 7. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Dude, I, that's what I edit on is Premiere Pro. <laughs> I love Premiere. But I think I also learned on, uh, I think Final Cut 7. It might yeah. have been. It was a while it's ago. Like the cheap option, kind of. Or like the option that like everybody had a copy of it, so you just pass it around, you know? Yep, I agree. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Man. So then when did you, like, what, did, what was your biggest takeaway from film school? Because film school is another one that a lot of people feel both ways about it. Yeah. Um, well, see, I, was, I went to a high school film program, and oh, then, right on. and then, I, and then at, U, at Valencia, I like dropped out of it, and then went to UCF, and then like I was never a good student, so I could never get into like radio and TV, yeah. <laughs> but like I was never good enough to get. I don't. I still don't feel like I'm a visionary. I'm like the Kevin Smith. Like I just some make would say is know. a visionary, <laughs> <laughs> but he's not like a visionary. He just like tells what he knows, right? Sure. Um, so like I could never get into film school and stuff, but um. I wasn't going to let that stop me because I, yeah. I just didn't care. <laughs> there's, there's so many people that are like in the A-team now that have yeah. not. Because that, from what I've learned from a lot of people is film school, the, the only benefit film school has is the network that you can create from the school, exactly. which yeah. you can also do outside of film school. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. like you said yeah. at the beginning, just being in L.A., you're surrounded by possible collaborators. Yeah. Whereas, oh, actually, that... That, like, brings something up, though. Like, me and Phil, my DP Phil. He's awesome. Everybody from Laserline. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the best. We went to high school together, so I guess. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. Really? He was a grade lower than me, yeah. Right on. They're killing it. Um, yeah, they're totally killing it. You got to have those guys on there. I do. I do. <laughs> Man. So, That's... yeah, it is your network, but, like. I don't feel like I learned anything from film school, but I also feel like I'm kind of dumb. Like I, <laughs> I just want to learn it from doing it and like sitting in a classroom. I'm not going to learn how to do it. Sure. Um, so like, I don't know that, I guess the biggest thing for me was like, I got lucky enough that my boss at golf channel, I was an interdisciplinary studies major, mm -hmm. which means take whatever the fuck you can to get out of here. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And my boss at Golf Channel was an interdisciplinary studies major, too. And he, that's why he hired me, apparently. Hey, whatever so, works. Yeah, so, I mean, film school, it is what you make it. I've seen people in film school, like, do really well. Yep. And then I've seen people from film school, school not do really well. And, you know, the same. Yep. same I agree with that. They're, yeah, the other way around. I just think, I think... Doing anything that you want to do, not just film, like you got to have guts and you got to be honest with yourself. Because I thought for so long that I could make it in Orlando. And I and that was another thing like music. It wasn't working. Orlando was not working. Right. The relationships I were building there were falling apart. And like I could never get it to stick together. But like when I moved to L.A., I met all these people who were like in my corner. And everybody talks about how competitive L.A. is. But like. It's not really like that. Maybe it's just my field post production, but like, sure, it's not really like that. Even with Kurt and Kelsey, like I, I never hear them talking about like the competitiveness of acting. Like, right? There seems to be maybe it's just this point in time. There's like a boom, but there seems to be enough for everybody, and everybody like helps each other out. You know? Sure. Had you been to LA before you moved there? Yeah, me and my brother flew out. There's a vlog on my channel. Me and my brother flew right. out to visit our friend Nick. Um, 
and we just like walk we just like drove around and walked around and saw everything and then drove and then came back <laughs> right on right on so when you moved to la what was the biggest shocker was it the prices yeah it was all of it but like yeah see i moved to san francisco first oh and, yeah like, san francisco and that nice. was like yeah, that was like bigger a bigger shock because like the rent is way more outrageous there. It's harder to get an apartment. Mm -hmm. The culture shock was like way way more. Oh, you know? Yeah, and I think that's the biggest thing for me. It's just like the culture shock. Like I'm used to Florida living. You know, like I come from a old Southern Baptist family to like move to California was like insane. Sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Man, so when you moved to San Francisco, was LA always the the objective, or you like just to get to anywhere they'll get you? I, it was like anywhere that I could go, that's and fair. and the the same thing happened at ILM. That's like becoming a re reoccurring theme. Is like I applied at ILM and I like got I, I got lucky enough to get an interview and I like impressed them and I made it through to ILM and I was like, holy shit, I'm at my dream place to work which i can maybe move to another department i wasn't doing what i wanted but maybe i can move into what i wanted to do mm -hmm. um and like i was there when like the force awaken was force awakens was being made and like i ran into oh, ryan johnson on God. campus like he was there writing and shit what and, yeah and i'm like in this environment that's like the the ideal dream environment but i'm not doing what i want to do and mm -hmm. i wasn't really in the pl i wasn't really happy in san francisco so it was like even though this is cool and it's going to hurt to not be here, you can't be here right now. You right. Know? You got to do what's right for you. Yeah. I yeah. Know. And I actually got fired from Iowa. <laughs> oh, well, that happens sometimes. <laughs> it was, but it was, the, it was that same story. Like, that job wasn't a fit for me. And, like, yeah, they should have known that before sending me out there. But, like, that job wasn't a fit for me. And that job got me to the next place. So, like. Sure. So you said you learned to edit pretty early on was post-production where you always wanted to be because i know you as a director yeah yeah that yeah i always wanted to direct but like once i started editing i was like oh this is my thing that's your jam yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and like that's gonna be my career path because like directing i feel is like sometimes like a privilege like sure it's so hard to direct things you know and like i know i can make money editing and assistant editing i can make a steady income doing that and i can direct on the side, which is what a lot of people do. Yeah, you know? yeah, that makes sense. So but that's one of my goals this year is I've met enough directors now that, like, I and I've talked to them, like, in the past year about, like, shadowing them this year and, like, just really, like, trying to figure out how to be a better director and to get work as a director, too, you know? Sure, that makes sense. Do yeah. you, do you, so what was the first thing you directed then? Do you remember? Well, you like, made a lot of videos. Besides, like, the... Besides, like, the stuff from, like, high school and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I directed stuff in high school, like, short films. I directed short films in college. But, like, I feel like the first video that I, like, directed, directed. Wait, hold on. How do I word this? The first video that I didn't feel like an imposter <laughs> was the, um, Stranger Things. <laughs> oh, man. That was, like, two years ago. <laughs> you did. All right. First off, that thing is amazing. And I have a lot of questions about the post for that because <laughs> you did the, what is it? The tales of, um, what is it called? The stranger things, something in Dale. My God. Oh, uh, the story him. of Henry and Dale, Henry and Dale, the story of Henry and Dale. God butcher that. See, I'm not going to edit that out. Who's the <laughs> idiot now? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you took a, a throwaway line from stranger things and told that story, which I think is amazing. Um, yeah. Like when that wow. start, like when that came out, like I was obsessed with with it, like everyone else, and yeah, I was, well, yeah. and I really want to play in this universe. I don't know what it is, but I want to play in this universe, whether it's like a parody, or like what. And I was like everybody, I was watching it over and over and over again, over and over again. And then I started watching it, like to try to think of ideas. And then like that scene came up where they're just like, oh, these two guys are missing. I was like, wow, that could be, like, a cool thing. No one's, like, really going to dig that deep into it, but I can make this story about this, and it could be kind of cool. You know? Yeah, kind of cool. It's awesome. <laughs> so how how was, how was long was that shoot? We did it, it, it was like Star Wars. We planned it in three, and we did it in four. I technically make Star Wars four because that last night, you know. Oh, right, right, right. That makes sense. Um, so we had to go back and, like, shoot a bunch of stuff that we had missed, um, cause I, you know, I'm still a rookie director. Like, I feel like the, 
the Star Wars shoot was good. We just didn't plan accordingly. <laughs> Who needs plans? <laughs> <I know. laughs> if I've learned anything from this podcast, is who needs plans? <laughs> but I'm still like I'm still like learning and stuff. So <clears throat> we knew that we had missed a lot of shots that we needed, and we needed to go back for a fourth night. And even that fourth night like stretched on to like morning. Um, but I remember one of those nights. It was either the third night or the fourth night. I want to say it was the third night. It was like the coldest night in Florida, really? and like everyone was freezing to death. And, like, I had Tim out there in a fucking T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, man. But everyone was, like, awesome. Like, for Stranger Things and Star Wars, that, those were the two. And Harry Potter, because I was with Bill. Oh, my God. Travis. Oh, we're talking about that soon. <laughs> <laughs> but That's like, next. Those three were, like, and those were the three that I, like, broke away from from my Orlando peeps. Those Those three films were, like, the easiest films to make. Like, really? everybody was, like, on board. No one cared. Everybody just wanted to make it the best they could be, you know? Sure. Sure. That makes so, sense. Yeah. So it was in Florida. Interesting. I would have imagined Georgia just because of the setting uh, well, for the Stranger Things. Oh, dude. My – okay. So our uh, our grip and electric guy, Charles, we, we actually shot it in his parents' backyard. Cause what? Because we couldn't anywhere else to shoot it because we needed the power – for the lights, right? Sure. So we're literally when you turn the camera around, the the garage is right behind us. Oh wow! And Charles <laughs> cut out because it has to look like Indiana, right? Right. He cut out all of the palmetto bushes what? that make, that are like you know because it looks like Florida palmetto yeah. bushes and they're everywhere, right? He had like I swear to God it was like six foot tall pile of like palmetto bushes that he wow. cut out. Wow. For no pay. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, Man. the hero. <laughs> That's nuts. So, it, in, the, in this in the short film that you made, they go to the Upside Down. How yes. how did you make it look exactly like the show? Like, what is the process of that? Um, a lot of Googling of After Effects tutorials. Because, like, there was only, like, one Upside Down tutorial. And I was like, this isn't the look I'm looking for. I don't want to build a particle system because I built one and it looked really weird. So I was like, I'm just going to go 2D with this. So I literally just, we shot it that way. We um, we cooled the temperature in the camera. So in camera, like it's a little bit cooler. Mm -hmm. um, and it's graded cooler too. Um, but I literally just layered smoke, fog, and uh, it was ashes. Really? And, and then reversed the ashes to make them look like they were, they were coming up. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it's actually, like, really simple. <laughs> wow. It looks amazing. Thanks. Like, thanks. I, me I remember, uh, I mean, obviously, before we worked together, I was like, I'm going to watch everything she's ever done. And <laughs> and that that effect specifically, I was like, everyone, look at this. And then uh, <laughs> from there, I watched your, your Harry Potter one, which is so good. And, uh, know, you know, every, everyone likes that one the best. <laughs> well, I mean, it's Phil, you know, his performance is just, I know, man, it's so, <laughs> Phil, dude, it's so good. <laughs> it is. He's behind the camera a lot. He needs to be in front. He's so good, I know, man. I, you know what? Uh, we joked about this when we were shooting stranger things. We were like, man, Travis and, and Phil were like, uh, really, really close to being Henry and Dale. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 they could have. They could, they're they so good. At, I think they would have been awesome. <laughs> actually, now that I'm adding it up, Phil and Travis are good at everything. Mm. They are, dude. Don't forget Trevor. Don't forget Trevor. Oh, Trevor. Of course. <laughs> of course. So Trevor, Trevor's like, he's like uh, their mastermind. <laughs> exactly. He's he's the real brains behind it all. The others yeah. just look smart. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was actually filmed at Universal or Islands of Adventure. Yeah. Yeah. That Potter was World. such a catch that I wanted. Cause you're trying to think of like a viral video. You're like, man, what's viral? Uh, everybody's looking up like Harry Potter walkthroughs. Everybody loves Harry Potter videos. Everybody loves visual effects, and I like just combine them all together. But you're saying how? Yeah, how did you, how did you film there? So when when we did it, we knew that we would never get permission to do it. Yep. <laughs> That's an indie yeah. filmmaker in a sentence, right there. And, I, and that that film like actually like I guess defines my attitude to filmmaking like you tell me I'm gonna do something I'm gonna do it anyways I don't care yeah. so many people like warned me not to make that film and I was like what's the worst that can happen they take it down and they were like no they could sue you and stuff and I'm like but I didn't make money off of this like that's true that's true 
You know, I paid to come into the park. Like, come on. True. I'm, I'm just a tourist. Like, yeah, of course. Putting together pieces of my film, you know. Exactly. And, You're a vlogger with special effects and a cast and a script. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like, it's not. And people come to to Harry Potter land like dressed like Harry Potter. Phil and Travis were nowhere and in no means dressed like wizards. You know what I'm saying? It's true. It's true. Yeah. That was part of their the the story though. Like we wanted them to look like muggles, so they like picked weird but casual looking things that like they could blend in, but like when you look at them, you're like, man, that that's, well, that guy's wearing a members only jacket. That's weird. Right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> man. So you literally just guerrilla film make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just it was literally me, Dude. Phil, and Travis, and then Trevor came for a couple of the days. Well, we shot two days. Travis was there one day. And he wasn't there for the for like the first day, mm -hmm. um, but we were like, okay, they're blaring Harry Potter music, so we can't have dialogue, which actually works into our favor because we can't use the sound anyways. Sure. So like, so I'll write a script that doesn't have any dialogue in it, and like Phil says one line, which he recorded after the fact, and right then on. and then we did the voiceover at the beginning to help set up the story. But yeah, we were like, let's pick costumes that won't get us in trouble that don't make us stand out mm -hmm. let's let's use a a tiny sony a7s2 which looks really good you shot it, it on the sony a7 yeah wow and we put uh we have like canon lenses and stuff like that so it looks really good and we were like we're gonna take our time but not too much time you know what i'm saying sure it, gotta do it quick yeah we're just gonna do it so we came there with a shot list and we did like we went we went like increasingly more difficult but we would go we would like shoot in one location and then move to the next location and blah, blah 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 but we knew that there was that one shot where where travis hits the suitcase out of phil's hand and the suitcase has to go flying it has to hit the ground right oh boy yeah we're like we have to do that one last because they're gonna they're gonna definitely kick us out yeah <laughs> <laughs> this will be the and, point <laughs> and they did we did it last and they kicked us out really and then Philip, because Philip's always got to do shit like this, was like, that's all right. We already got our shots anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, my God. Like, what man? Just leave. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. After two days? That was a two-day shoot? Yeah, we were trying to do it in one, but I always fuck everything up, so. <laughs> that's, that's always how it goes. It should take, like, an hour. It won't. It's going to take you an hour to figure out which way to point the camera. I know, and I think I'm getting better at directing, not from directing, but being an assistant editor, I literally watch directors all day. That's my job. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. Like, so there were no lights, no nothing, just you three <laughs> and a camera. Yeah, no wow. lights. And Phil's really good. Phil and Travis and Trevor are really good at, like, placement of camera. Like, more more than just composition, like, Phil would be like, hey, the sun is coming through this uh building right here and it looks really cool philip or travis stand right there i'm gonna get this shot really quick i don't know what we're gonna use it for but we're just gonna get it and like he's super good at stuff like that he's got the eye as they say yeah and actually uh, since we're talking about that when so i went to arts high school and so did philip so philip was like an art major which is what i think makes him a great dp sure he he like draws and paints and stuff so he knows like what how to paint a picture with a camera you know and I don't know how to do that. Like, I have no idea how to do that, which Maybe is why I'm with Phil. Yeah. I'm an actor. I don't know how to do anything. <laughs> so I can be like, Phil, here's what I need to give it to me. <laughs> exactly. This is what I want. <laughs> yeah. And then I just tell you what to say, and then we're going to go. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it's a symbiotic relationship. I get it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so the effects in that Harry Potter short also were amazing. So how did you make them look that good like what what is in an effect because like with with fan films right that's where a lot of them fall short like you can tell a lightsaber in a fan film versus a lightsaber in star wars it just yes. looks different Dude, and yeah, with your spells really hard uh, right and with your spells that you made uh it just looks amazing so like what what is in a spell to make it look that good so like when i started looking up spells like i not only like looked at spells from the movies but i also looked at like what other fan films were doing sure and like i gathered like oh it's all different and i'm gonna have to think of like what i want it to look like which was like hard right like sure. when we did stranger things was like oh, i know what the upside down is when we did star wars it's like i know what a bullet blaster bolt looks like mm -hmm. and like doing spells it's like man it's kind of like up to your interpretation yeah. but so like with every 
these last few films, like my my goal with the film was like not only to like direct a film and practice directing, but it was like practicing editing and visual effects too. So like with those, with like Stranger Things and Harry Potter, and and the other Star Wars film, like the first Star Wars film that I made, the like toy one. Yeah, yeah. It was like what effects do I want to learn how to do, and how instead of just practicing them with a tutorial, I'm just gonna make a film and then I have to figure it out. Right. Sure. And that but what I did practice. with, yeah, but what I did with, um, with, uh, Harry Potter is I just like watched a bunch of, a bunch of tutorials, which is like me saying this about all the films, like makes me not sound like a good visual fix. <laughs> no, it sounds great. And also lets people know that like you can teach yourself. Essentially. Yeah, like exactly. you, this is, just, I... this is the inspirational point from your story is that, yeah. You don't have to go to these fancy schools and pay all these money to learn these effects with the internet, and your stuff looks amazing. Dude, so to hear that you learned that it, I learned, I learned from YouTube, and actually, I feel like I got the job at ILM from what I learned on YouTube because I was learning about visual effects while working at the Golf Channel, like on my own. Sure. All the stuff we did, we like had to sit around and wait. It was like a hurry up and wait type thing. Mm-hmm. So I just watched tutorials all day long, and like so when I went to ILM, like I knew what they were talking about. Like it wasn't that wasn't the issue, you know? Sure. Sure. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's totally that. Like you can learn how to do anything from the internet, but like for the Harry Potter spells, I just would find different tutorials that I liked. And I'd be like, Oh, I like how the smoke looks in this tutorial. And I like how the wand looks like in, in this tutorial. And then like, interesting enough, um, the spells are actually, um, a plugin for After Effects called Saber that's used for lightsabers. What? But you can use it for anything. Like, really? It's gamer who created it, like, made it so that you can use it for all these different stuff. So, like, I just would take a lightsaber effect, like, bend it to make it look 3D, warp it to make it look like it's, like, squiggly, and then it just have to travel across the screen. <laughs> that's awesome. I know, right? <laughs> what? I didn't know that. Yeah. Go back and watch them. They all have, like, cores, like lightsabers. Yeah. yeah. What? That's so cool. Especially because I don't know how to do any of this stuff. So you're it's, like, literal magic to me that you're doing all these things. I'm like, <laughs> look at how cool that is. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, speaking of cool. I, I feel like actors are, like, magicians. Like, I'll sit and talk with Kurt and Kelsey, like, for hours about, tell me, tell me about acting. Like, what's the process? What do I need to know as a director? Like, Tell me anything you know. <laughs> See, I've, I think I've learned something as well here. You've surrounded yourself with people who are too good at everything. And that's I'm starting true. to get it. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not good enough for them. I just have them all. <laughs> <laughs> that, but that's a skill in and of itself. You're the glue that keeps the team together. You yeah, built and, yeah, Phil's told me that too. He's, he's like, you, you're a great producer in the fact that like, you, can, you can make these people come together to make this project. It's you know? true. You're the Nick Fury. Of, of <laughs> that is true. That is very true. <laughs> you know, these are your Avengers. Hell yeah. Uh, dude. Hell yeah. Speaking of cool. So one of the things I am most proud of that I've ever done thus far on my acting journey is Scoundrels. Oh, uh, thanks, man. That means dude. a lot. <laughs> it's, it's the thing that I show the most people. And they're like, oh, okay, oh, do you have a reel? I was like, watch this. I was like, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like I'm not terrible in this. And it looks amazing. So where did where did Scoundrels the idea come from? Yeah, and because it it was a really long time from the time that I auditioned for you to the time that we filmed. So yeah. like, what was this whole process? How did Scoundrels come to be? How did you? A lot of times when people are making fan films and whatnot, they they have to break it down into like bite sized increments. So when you have this massive idea like Star Wars, like yeah. how how did you? take this massive idea and then break it down into something that was more manageable. So I took that like gigantic story, right? And Mm -hmm. I was like, I like these characters, whether or not they're considered canon and whether or not they're true to like what I truly envisioned them to be, which is not really possible. Mm -hmm. Um, I was like, I still want to tell these, the story because it's still a cool story. It's still like everyone calls it. Um, what is that? What is that? Western, um, shit. Crazy Eight, the Crazy Eight in space. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's yep. what everybody calls it. I was like, that's still an interesting concept. Um, so I like just, I just like plucked out just a story, excuse me, of this character. Mm-hmm. Um, like what at his core, he's a bounty hunter, and he's surrounded by these 
kooky friends, you know, oh, and yeah. and like I was just like I just need like an introduction for him to the world, an introduction to his friends, an introduction to the world that he's in, which is like the underworld, you know. Sure. And I was like, there's nothing better than just like a straight up bar fight. <laughs> You're right. You're right. And I was like, I I need something that I can like shoot in one location. And, like, I'm always thinking, like, I, I, you know, I'm always short on actors and crew members, so what can I do with, like, minimal crew and minimal actors? But I knew that I had to fill out that bar, and I at least had to have six cast members. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a step up from Stranger Things. It was, like, I had two cast members in Stranger Things. Let's, like, up the ante and see what we can do. So I, like, wrote a script that was, like, based in one place that we could try to do fairly quickly. Um and that's what I did, and I just started saving money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear that. My my favorite thing to tell people about Scoundrels, I was like, yeah, we filmed all of that in a garage. It's, <laughs> really? It's that's insane. That's my least favorite thing to tell everyone, because like that's all I see is that fucking garage. <laughs> <laughs> that, but that's but the I best part. That, Nobody else people, does. And I'm like, can you tell it's filmed in a garage? Because it's filmed in a garage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everyone I tell, they're like, what? I was like, yeah, that whole thing was in a garage. They're like. Oh my god! I was like, yeah, well, I know, I know. I see that like separating divider between the rooms where it's like it's um it's like square. And in Star Wars, it should be rounded. <laughs> like, you see inside they, the sausage, and you're like, oh man. I know, and then I see I see the brick behind Lindy, and I'm like, there's no brick in Star Wars A. <laughs> <laughs> And then I'm like, B, uh, I had to cover up that fucking garage door, and those are the only things I could find to cover that cover up the door. Um, and like it everything worked. looks so great from the other angle, like into the crowd it looks so beautiful. Like they're in perfect silhouette and you can see like the twilight, you know, whatever oh, yeah. those things are called, you know, you can see the, ma- like the outline of the mask. God, Phil's a genius. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I remember being on that set and like freaking out cause the aliens looked so good. I was like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm so lucky on that. Cause, cause for stranger things, the guy who did, all the makeup and the um, prosthetic work for Stranger Things mm-hmm. is Eric Garcia, who is on Face Off. Oh, right on! <laughs> and like we kind of we had we didn't really have like a makeup team for for Scoundrels. Like we had Jackie who did like the makeup for um, for Lindy, but like it was literally like, and that's how me and you met. I was like, who owns Star Wars masks that You're can right. show up? <laughs> you know? You're right. That's... And then and then you audition and I was like, make sure you bring your mask. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like, the, we find out the real reason I got cast was because of the mask. Like God, we, uh, he said he wanted to audition. I guess we'll, well just no, get that's not why. <laughs> that was how you in, how we initially met. But then you sent me that audition. And I was like, man, spot on. There you go. <laughs> Nailed it. That's that is true. Yeah, because we met. You put out like a call online asking for Star Wars masks and. Uh, <laughs> co-host of the dorky diva savannah best friend yeah. of mine she was like hey i know a guy who has a solista mask and yes. i sent you a, i sent you a picture you're like oh it sounds great yeah if you'd like to if you'd like to come that'd be awesome and i was like i just finished a feature <laughs> and i i had a very small semblance of uh possible confidence i was like maybe i could do this i'm gonna i'm gonna try and you're like yeah you can audition her if you want and dimitri and i cleaned out a room in his house and moved a kitchen table against the other thing and bought cards. We're like, we're just going to do this tape for real. I don't know this story. Yeah. <laughs> so that we went full on. Like I was like, this is a star Wars fan film, Dimitri. And the script's really good. Like I really want to book this. So for the tape. Yeah, we did. We set up a whole poker scene, uh, in one of his rooms. That was Dimitri. Yeah, and was then Dimitri. Dimitri came on and he's like one of my boys, dude. He's <laughs> one of my best friends in the world. He, uh, so Dimitri for the longest time, I called him my unofficial agent Yeah. because he was a casting director. So he got me a lot of auditions. Really? Um, and almost every audition tape I made with Dimitri, I, I booked the role. Whoa. Because like, he was just Dimitri's really good. Dimitri's like my good luck charm, I feel like. Yeah, mine too. Mine yes. too. And he's he's so good at, like him and I are close enough now to where – Like, we have a comfortability, so I feel like he can get the best out of me. So a lot of times, I think that's why I got a lot of the roles that I did, was because Dimitri would direct me and be like, try this, try this, do this a little different, and he'd shoot them and edit them for me and then send them out. That's that's so so cool, man. I'm so glad you brought him and Bob, like, 
Yeah, them those boys. Those boys, dude. Mm-hmm. We the, we couldn't have done that without those guys. <laughs> They're the best people ever. <laughs> They're the best, dude. My God, I miss them. They moved I, to Atlanta. I know, and I I was like, "Come on, Demetri, you got to do it." <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> so I like separated you guys. <laughs> That's okay. He's actually my sleeper agent in Atlanta. It's, yeah, he's one of my contacts sure. up there. But dude, Scoundrels was so good. So how how did you go about? casting that many people how did you find everybody was it all casting calls um kind of yeah um so the reason let's like jump back a little bit so the reason yeah. it took so long is like when i did uh stranger things i had an, an agreement with this guy to do he was gonna help me do stranger things and he was gonna help me do scoundrels and he's he like builds sets and stuff right on and he like bailed on me two weeks before he's supposed to make scoundrels right I remember that so and then I had to go back to L.A. to make more money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, like, we all had to wait a year. And, like, Lindy was first cast as, as Cora, And, like, that was all ready to go, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, then I went back to L.A. And I'm, I can't remember if I met Kurt and Kelsey that year or the year before. But me and Kurt and Kelsey met walking our dogs we were neighbors right oh really and i hadn't truly well i had asked nathan to be dabbing but i was like ah man he seems like super busy and all this stuff yeah. <laughs> and i felt bad for like like kind of leaving him on the hook for a year and when i met kurt i was like this this guy is dabbing like yeah Nathan's great he's a fantastic actor but like i'm getting the vibes from this guy absolutely right? um and i was like hey man will you read this script and he read it, and he like loved it, and Kelsey loved it, and I and I was like, Kelsey, do you want to play Cora? And then we'll we'll have Lindy play um, the bad role, which I think it had a different name at the time. It was supposed to be a male. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, that would be kind of cool, like to make the main bad person a female. Yeah. You know, and like this would be kind of cool, right? Uh, and that's how that started. So we had to wait a whole full year. And then, like, it came down to, like, okay, where the hell are we going to shoot this thing? Because we, we needed one location, but we had to dress it. I mean, anything Star Wars, you have to dress. Because yeah, that's sure. the other part. It's, like, I want to make a Star Wars fan film, but I don't want to make a lightsaber fight in the woods like everyone. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we yeah. had to dress a room. And then, like, thankfully, Sam came in, Sam Falco. And, like, I knew Sam, but, like, oh, yeah, he auditioned for one of the roles. Oh, yeah, God, I feel so terrible that I couldn't give all your roles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad I got a role. <laughs> um, and and he can't. He was like dressed in the costume, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Like maybe he could be dabbing. But then we started <laughs> talking, and like he went and like me and Sam knew each other before he auditioned. But he took me out to his truck, and he had like all these Star Wars guns. And I was like, "Will you just please help me make this film?" <laughs> sure. <laughs> and I like begged him. Um, so, like, he was finally, like, we could probably do it in my garage because he ha- kind of had it dressed a little bit anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, and we spent, like, a day dressing it. But he had, like, all this cool shit. I went to Ikea and bought, like, a few different things. But, like, he had all this cool shit that we just, like, made this room out of. And then, yeah, I'd cast all you guys, like, at different points. Because I remember we couldn't find a third bad guy. And Lindy was like, oh, I know this guy, Josh. I bet he'll be good. And then, like, me and Josh started talking. I was like, yeah, he will be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was right. <laughs> she was right. Um, so, yeah, did that answer your question? You did. No, jo- Josh is amazing. That whole cast was, like, next level. I, I know, man. We all, like, we ended up with this team that was, like, so much better than what. I think we were all coming in kind of skeptical of each other. Mm-hmm. Like, me and Kurt and Kelsey were the ones that knew each other the closest because we lived together, right? Sure. Like, when we all got there, I think we were all sort of skeptical of each other. And then, like, we just meshed and made this amazing thing. Like, we you couldn't have made the same project with different people. I agree. Know? I agree. Yeah. God, just so good. I, when I think about that all the time, like, with, with Josh and Kelsey and Kurt and Lindy and everybody, I was like, I feel like uh, having done that, I came out of it a much better actor because of how good they were. I, like, had to keep up and be like, oh, God, this they're they're so in this. And then getting thrown onto a bar and breaking bottles on Josh's head was the highlight. That was the magical fart. <laughs> magical fart. <laughs> magical fart. <laughs> that was the magical part about you guys as a cast is like, um, 
I don't know how it started, but, like, all of you guys, like, made each other better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't I don't know if it was one person that, like, started this thing, but, like, all of you guys wanted to be better together. It was weird. Like, yeah, like, you, like, Josh would try to outdo you, and then you would try to outdo Josh, and then, like, Manny and, and um, Kelsey are, like, going at it. Yep. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Like, and and me and Phil are back there, like, Phil smoking a cigarette. We're just trying to figure <laughs> our shit out. <laughs> It's true. How are we getting a shot? <laughs> and Kelsey's like passed out on the couch. We're taking naps in, in shifts. Oh God. Yeah. That there was that story. So like, that's my bad as a director. Like, and I really do need like an AD or somebody to help me like schedule this out better. Cause I'm just not great at that, which I think we could have done it, but we, we always, we got like, it wasn't you guys. It was, it, I feel like it was me and, and like the, the crew, not so much the crew. It was me. I'm going to take the whole credit. <laughs> We got, like, lazy those first two days, and then when it came to the third day, we were like, shit, we got so much <laughs> stuff to do. Yeah, <laughs> and so we stayed day. up for 24 hours. Um, but it came out great. Thank you for staying, staying up for 24 hours. <laughs> I loved it, man. Th- these are the kind of stories that, like, people tell forever. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we, yeah. did like a, we did, like, a 20-hour day in a garage, and look what we made. And it came out good. <laughs> We're always, like, so opposite because, like, the, that's the story that me and Phil are like, hey, never, never fucking talk about that with me again. Really? <laughs> <laughs> See, you guys got, like, PTSD from it, whereas I take it as, like, a badge of honor. Be like, look what I did. <laughs> like, and still made it. That'd be the other thing. If the final product wasn't good, then I'd yeah. be like, yeah, it's, you can tell it was a 20-hour day. Yeah. Oh, God. But you can't. It's so good. Yeah. It's because me and Phil are, like, perfectionists and, like – Sure. Um, as much as we like fight, we're always fighting for the same outcome. Sure. So sure. like, I never feel like my fights with him are like malicious or whatever. They are truly those like creative fights that creative people have together. You know what I'm saying? It's true. It's true. You're both trying to make the best thing. Yeah, and it's just part of the process. Like, like I was telling my family about how much fighting goes on in post, like between directors and editors and stuff. And they're like, "This stuff really happens." I'm like, "Yeah." Does it's it? a creative thing. Like everyone wants to own, wants to own this project and have their own voice told. You know. Sure. And more times than not, like nobody's on the same page. You know. Sure. So actually, out of that, how much input does an editor have versus a director of a project? Oh man, that's that's a question that I'm still trying to figure out. Really? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I am building my way through the system. Like I came out to like as an as if you want to be an editor in LA, like you have to. You move to L.A. or to New York. I don't know the New York path because New York has their own union, so I only know our path. Like, sure. you move to L.A., and you either start as an assistant editor or you start as a post-production assistant, and then you, like, move your way up. And to be able to be on, like, scripted shows, scripted union shows, you have to get 100 um, non-scripted hours. So, like, or not hours. I'm sorry. I always fuck that up. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, days. 100 days. That's a so lot. That's even more. That's even more, that's yeah. But really, 90 days is three months, right? So it's really like four months. Sheesh. And so, like, that to get to that scripted level, you have to go through, like, all these different other things, right? And I'm, like, just now getting into scripted, which is, like, crazy because I felt like it was going to be forever for me to get there. But it's only taken me, like, three years. Hell, yeah. Um, so I'm still trying to figure out, like, how much impact an editor has on, like, a show like Game of Thrones or a movie like Star Wars. I don't think it's much. Like, you go through you go through rounds of edits. So, like, every scripted show starts with, like, an editor's cut. Mm-hmm. And that's, like, the editor has full control of that, right? Okay. So then the director comes in, and then they do their cut. And then it's usually, like, a network cut or a studio cut or whatever, you know? Oh. But it's usually like the EP that has the final say. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, the one paying. Yeah. yeah. I hear you. I the hear network you. or the studios, they're like final say. Um, really? Yeah. I didn't see. This is the inside baseball talk that like nobody knows how the inner workings go. Yeah. So what? So with what programs are like TV things using nowadays? Avid Media Composer is like the biggest one. Can you hear that airplane? I can, but it don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell I'm a movie person. I'm like, but... Yeah, exactly. Hold for sound. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, so Avid. Avid is the big is the biggest one. Um, stuff is starting to happen in Premiere. Like I worked on a Disney show that was in Premiere. Uh, a lot of like indie features are in Premiere. Obviously, like Deadpool is in Premiere. Really. Um, very little Final Cut, but I have seen that stuff. But usually, I I like if your project is in Final Cut, I don't really want to work on your project. <laughs> <laughs> Nine times out of ten, you know. Sure. What I'm um, so those are the big ones. Like you have to learn Avid, um, and there's tons of like classes and stuff. Like I just I I'm I'm a working assistant editor, but I just took an assistant editor webinar over the weekend. So like sure, you Keep know, learning. and and like we're kind of like. There's no, like, you don't go to college to learn how to be an assistant editor, right? Sure. So, like, the big thing out in L.A., and, and which I think is trickling over to New York, too, because a lot of the people that I hang out with in L.A. are from New York, um, there's, like, this boost of, like, education for our assistant editors. So, like, there's a website called Master the Workflow. You can pay, like, it's it's not it's not cheap. Like, it's, like, a couple, it's, like, 1500 bucks. Yeah, and they'll teach you how to be a scripted assistant editor, and like, oh, cool. Yeah, so there's like, if you want to learn how to do it, you can, you can do it. As opposed to like years ago, where people were just like, no, these are my secrets or whatever. But like, I took a class like this weekend because it was other assistant editors taking or teaching the class. So like, maybe they have workflows that that will help me in the future to be able to do stuff easier or better. You know, makes sense. So it's kind of like paying for job experience. So a lot of like what I learned, I learned on the job. And then like you go, you pay for a class like that. And it's like they're teaching you their job experience. You know what I'm saying? Sure. It's it's basically college, but without all that extra stuff and the massive amounts of time. Yep, exactly. <laughs> right on. That's what, I'm learning that as well with a lot of the like successful people that I've talked to. A lot of them is like in the interim between work, like keep learning. In oh, whatever yeah. way that you can. Like, that's one thing that, like, I, I'm doing differently this year. Like, I've never taken an acting class before. Really? Uh, yeah. So that's been a thing where I don't know how I got everything until now. I So I have uh, I have two agents. One's gotten me way more work, and the other one, not so much. And when I got the second agent and I showed her my resume, um, when she first looked at it, she's like, who, who let you do this? I was like, what do you mean? Because I had, like, 15 different projects from – commercials to short films i did like three yeah. features by that time and she's like I, I don't who let you do this i was like i don't know i just i made tapes and and i i got the parts i don't know and she said normally if you have no training listed people won't even look at your resume i really? was like i was like oh well i don't know what to tell you my resume is this long i've done all these things yeah. uh but since then i've been like maybe i should look into something so i took the uh the master class that Samuel L. Jackson did on acting, which was yeah. awesome. And then I've got another class coming up in the same vein, like you're saying. Like, there are classes to where you can just learn more tricks of the trade to add to your bag of tricks already. It yeah. It only makes you better. I've heard, like, you know, Oscar, Emmy winning and nominated actors, like, still taking classes, you know? Yep, yep. Just to keep sharpening the knife, as it were. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, that, like, acting, like, I don't get acting, which is, like, kind of what. <laughs> Me I get neither. really secure because I'm like, how am I going to be a good director if I don't understand acting? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, You'll know what you want, though. Yeah, I know. You know? <laughs> it's up to the actor to ge- be able to have the tools to give you what it is that you're asking for, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah exactly. Which is why I gave you guys a lot of like freedom when we did Scoundrels. Like, like I knew what I wanted for the characters, and then I was like, the rest is up to you. <laughs> and I was like talking to Kelsey and Kurt. I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god there's been so situa- so many situations where i've turned to kurt and kelsey and i'm like hey uh what do i do here <laughs> oh yeah yep. that, that was one thing i kept talking about josh because josh is in class all the time yeah and he's always learning things and i was like i i don't know what any of this means josh like what, what do you he's like oh there's this and this and like when we talked he couldn't believe that i'd never taken an acting class and i was like really? i don't know <laughs> I, just... Dude, me, I don't know if we ever told you the story, but me and Kurt and Kelsey, before we got, before you got to set, oh, no. we had a long conversation about oh, God. those three characters had to feel like a family, right? Oh, yeah. And I was like, so what do you guys advise in doing to, because they're married. Right. Slur alert. <laughs> so, yeah. So they're pretty close. <laughs> yeah, they're really close. Yeah. So how do you bring in this, this other person? 
And they were like, oh, we're just going to, like, as soon as he gets there, we're going to act like we've known him our entire lives. They did. That's yeah, exactly and, what happened. <laughs> yeah, and, and I was like, really? That's going to work? And they were like, yeah, he's going to, like, open up us completely. And that was, like, from their acting brains. <laughs> and I was like, but that's so simple. <laughs> so what you're saying is they played me like a book. <laughs> yeah, we manipulated all of that. So it was a little method, I guess. <laughs> it, hey, it did work because – that's the other thing is like I'm the king of yes and, yes. I will I will run a bit into the ground and I will <laughs> never give up, <laughs> to the detriment of my wife, um and so I remember the first time meeting Kelsey and Kurt, in that kitchen I was like hey what's up and Kurt was like what's up man how you been I was like oh I've been good how have you been and just yes anded everything he was doing, <laughs> oh my god, and then yeah when I remember he did that because I was like setting up for something and yeah. I remember like grabbing something and walking and like laughing at Kurt. <laughs> yeah. I was like, no, you look good. You look good. Wow. It's a, you lose weight. looks like you're losing weight. I don't know. Just costume fits head, you well. In my head, I was like, he's actually doing it. He's actually doing it. Yep. <laughs> yep. It worked. I know. It totally worked. I was totally. such a boob. I fell for the oldest trick in the book. <laughs> yeah, what was it like to get smashed in the head with a bottle? I got to do the smashing. It was Oh, the yeah, best. you did. <laughs> I forgot my own story. It was... That's right. You smashed uh, Josh. Yeah. It was uh, one of the best Josh moments of my Josh. life. Yeah. Um, yeah. I we mean, have, when are you ever going to uh, be able to do stuff like that? You know? I know, right? We had that one clip where you almost hit oh, him. Still <laughs> a crowning achievement. So, so for people that don't know, there we had, what do we have, like eight maybe? We had like yeah. six or eight bottles. Very limited amount yeah. of these. Yeah, better get it right. Yeah, they were, were they sugar glass? Yeah. They were sugar glass bottles, which you can break, and it makes the sound of glass. It looks like glass, but obviously it will hurt you less. Yeah. And uh, there's a shot at Scoundrels where Josh picks me up, slams me onto the bar, and I grab this bottle and I smash it over his head. Um, that is not a stunt. He really did pick me up and slam me on that over and over and over. Uh, yes. They Actually, I still have the jacket. It's got a huge rip underneath it from where Josh really? grabbed me because yeah. me and Josh are method. And, uh, <laughs> you guys are. And so and we had... The most dangerous part of that entire stunt that none of us thought of was that when you bust the bottle over his head... All the sugar glass In fell my... right to your eyes. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah, I learned that after the first bottle. <laughs> but we had we had so few that like we had to get it right, you know, because yeah. once we're out of bottles, we're out of bottles. Yeah. And so yeah, after the first bottle, it breaks over his head and he's over me, so it goes right into my face. And I was like, yeah. oh okay, well now I know. And that led to a good reaction shot when I get up because I got to kind of shake it off. Yeah. Um, but there's a scene, there's a take where I went to go smash it, and right before impact, uh, it was either you or Phil were like, wait. I was like, whoo, like, a, like a samurai. Because Phil was trying to, to up the difficulty. Yeah. Because Phil wanted to start on the, the bottle that was in the foreground. Yep. And then he wanted to rack to you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like, right as you smash it. Yep. So Phil's, like, trying to direct this this movement. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? Just smash the bottle. <laughs> it's to this day, I'm like, yeah, that's my moment. Because I, I, I full speed went at it and right, like, I might have even touched his hair. And yeah. then whoop, stopped did, it. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. That, that, that shot, though, is one of those things where, like, I give Phil a shot. I'm like, hey, I need a profile of the bottle being smashed on the Josh's head. And then that's what I love about Phil because he's like, okay. Uh, we'll get that shot. We'll do that one shot, and now we're gonna up it. And you're probably <laughs> this shot because it's gonna look better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair. I fair. love, I love it about him because because I'm just like, okay. <laughs> it worked out. That that sequence there is actually the first thing in my reel, because the I I got a bunch of advice from Kelsey and Kurt and a bunch of other people and uh, other actors. You didn't take my advice. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I took some of it. <laughs> and, they said that uh, a casting director won't look for more than, like, 15 seconds if it's not interesting. Which is totally... So okay. I was like, okay, I'm going to have a, me breaking a bottle over somebody's head and getting knocked out. That's interesting. Yes. And every person I've showed it to was like, oh, sweet. Like, they're right in right away because it's not just me being like, "Yeah, what? You, you know gotta, what I mean? You get the toss. The toss is cool, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, no, it's from, from the ground. Uh, actually, it starts with the knife. That's the opening shot of my reel. Yeah. When the knife lands right next to my head. And yeah. then it's me getting thrown. 
that knife good. shot is another example of like, okay, Phil, I need a knife being thrown. And he's like, all right, cool, Josh, throw the knife. All right, now we're going to whip pan over to this and that. And I'm like, yes, exactly. And it works <laughs> so good. It works so good. I'm, I'm quite proud. I'm quite yeah. proud of it. So. That, that, yeah, that knife looks pretty, pretty uh, real. It's gnarly. And I mean, it, that it was a such a knife. simple thing. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. I like it a lot. But can you believe we've been talking for uh, over an hour and 19 minutes already? Holy shit. How long are these supposed to be? They're usually an hour. Shit. This is what my show is. Whoop, whoop. We haven't even talked about Star Wars, man. You're right. You're right. We can talk about Star Wars anytime you want. This is yeah. this was cool though, right? You see what I mean? Very free flowing yeah. and just I like it. That's that's why whenever I tell people uh, when I book guests, uh, I'm like, hey, listen, it's a podcast. It is not an interview. You'll you'll learn that very quickly. On I don't have questions planned. I am not interested in that gotcha podcasting. It's like we're just gonna talk about whatever and get to know you as a person. Because <laughs> I like it. People to me are inherently interesting, and everyone's got their own stories to tell, and I like to be the one to let them tell it. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I yeah, I think that's why I listen to podcasts. Like I, I'm more interested in like people's stories, you know. Same. I wish I could be like a podcaster where I could just be like Joe Rogan and just talk about stuff. Yep. But like I don't know. I'm so self conscious. I'm like, who gives a shit what I have to say? Same, same. <laughs> I have one of those. It's called Bits and Bobs, and it's on my Patreon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I know for a fact that they want to hear about it because they support the channel. True that. Yep. True that. So I, I mean, I'm still extremely self conscious about it, but I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll get over it. Yeah, but this was I really fun. That imposter syndrome. We talk oh. about that a lot in LA. You know, mm-hmm. I talk about it a lot in Florida. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. a big thing here because, like, I mentioned it to a few it's people. A big thing like, here. Because, <laughs> 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 like, everybody has it out in LA. You know, I yeah. got it really bad. Same. 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 It wasn't until Phil was like, "When are you gonna actually start calling yourself a director?" Was when I was like, "I guess I should." Because yep. Phil was like, because I'm a director, I don't give a shit what you think. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. I just started calling myself an actor last week. So, you know, I'm getting there. It really is that, like, you have to I hate it. Like, accept it, you know? I hate it. My thing is, like, everyone's an actor nowadays. It's, like, the thing. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to be, I call it the, the American Idol situation. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be like, yeah, I'm an actor. I'm an actor. Here are these things that I can do. And then it gets to the point where I get an opportunity and actually I suck. But I thought I was awesome. I know. So I'm, like, I'm the same. Like, every job I take, I've been an assistant editor for years, and every job I take, I'm like, I'm going to fuck this one up. Yep. <laughs> 100% of the parts that I have booked, the second I got the call that I got it, I was like, I should call him back and tell him I can't do it. Every <laughs> single one. Like, really? te- Tethered was a big one. Tethered, I, like, got a phone call uh, from Chris Foster, and I was like, oh, my God, it's my first big movie. I'm one of the leads. This is crazy. And I was like, yeah, no, that sounds great. I'd love to. And we're going to meet uh, a week or so later and s- start the table read. The second I hung up, I was like, oh, my God, I don't know what I'm doing. I was like, I don't know. I've <laughs> never taken an acting class before. I've never acted in anything before like this on the scale. I was like, I need to call him back and tell him I got the wrong person. <laughs> and I felt but that way after right? everything. You just, you just saddle in and you figure it out. Yep. That was the other reason why in the interim from the time that you told me I got the part of Gage to when we filmed – Every few months, I'm like, hey, so, like, am I still Gage? <laughs> <laughs> Did you do that? I don't remember Yeah, that. Yeah, was, every time you gave me, like, an update, I was like, yeah, am I, am I still Gage? Though, like, is that, have you? I do remember you saying that. Yeah. But have you come to you... your senses and reconsidered? <laughs> no, it never bugged me. <laughs> right. I, was always, I was just like, man, I'm so stoked that, like, someone's not bailing on me. <laughs> oh, no, I, I would, if it still hadn't filmed yet, I'd be yeah. like, I'm really excited for Scoundrels. <laughs> I commit. That's hilarious. I commit. But no, this was really, really fun. I need to ask before I forget, uh, where can people find you online and your YouTube channel to watch all this amazing things you've done? Uh, my YouTube channel is The Big City Send Out. So it's youtube.com backslash The Big City Send Out. On Instagram, it's at Big City Brittany. And then on Twitter, I think it's like Big City Send Out. But I don't really go on Twitter that much. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> and then on Facebook, it's Big City Brittany. Sweet. I yeah. like it. I like it a lot. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Oh, I never told my story, my Star Wars story that I never told anyone. Let's hear your Star Wars story. Let's do it. Let's send it out on a strong note. The the reason, I mean, everybody's story is like, how did you get into filmmaking? And everybody's like, oh, yeah, so I watched Star Wars and I got into filmmaking. Yeah, same. And it was the same for me. But here's the story. So, like, 
this god i always hate admitting this because i always want people to think i've been a star wars fan for longer than i have (laughs) but i didn't i had seen star wars and we my mom recorded the ewok movies which i still hell yeah still the best um i recorded them off she recorded them off tv right and we would watch those movies as kids but like i didn't really get into star wars until it was like re-released because i saw it in the movie theater sure and like which was a is an entirely different experience than seeing it on your tv right totally totally (laughs) And I, like, totally got into it. And it was in the sixth grade, and we were supposed to do a sixth grade play. And it was torn between half the class wanted to do Star Wars and half the class wanted to do Winnie the Pooh. (laughs) The age-old nemesis. Yeah. So (laughs) the popular kids wanted to do Winnie the Pooh, so they went with Winnie the Pooh, and they didn't go with Star Wars. So the other half of the class that wanted to do Star Wars still wanted to do something, right? Sure. So we were like, you know what? Screw them. We're sixth graders. We're going to make our own Star Wars movie. Yeah. And we record the movie. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll never forget because I wanted to play Luke because I'm always the tomboy. I wanted to play Luke, right? Yeah. And the whole class was like, you're not really a Luke. And I was like, no, I'm the I'm the head of this. I'm going <laughs> yeah. to do <Luke." laughs> But there was really a kid in the class who would have been a better Luke. But the catch was... He was from England, so it's like, well, he's got to play C three PO. It's so the like, only logical decision here. <laughs> so the kids would be like, the kids would be like, yeah, but so and so, he's got, he looks like Luke, and I'm like, yeah, but he's got a British accent. He's got to. Exactly. Be- <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's say we never made the movie, but like, and I'm in my old childhood bedroom, so like, I could go into that closet, and if I could find my sixth grade yearbook, we all signed as our assigned characters. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and that was when I was like, yeah, I should make movies. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> that was the beginning. That's yeah. awesome. The, the movie that you never made was like, the idea of making a movie is pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, because I think it was more like the idea that I wanted to live in that environment so much that the closest that I could get there was to like make the movie, right? I know the feeling. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that's so funny. I know. That's awesome. This was way fun. Remind people again, where can they find your stuff? Um, YouTube.com slash the big city send out mm-hmm. or just search the big city send out. Um, that is the big city send out. Ah. And then Twitter is just big city send out. No, no, the Instagram and Facebook are big city Brittany. I like so, it. I've been blogging a lot lately, so. Sweet. Vlogs. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. I'm going to do it. This How much super- editing are you going to do to this? Uh, zero. <laughs> and... So. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it is at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian all over the place. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all Jedi Brian. If you enjoyed this episode, please share and tell your friends. Let them know we got some cool stuff going on over here. Also, I've gone and made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash Jedi Brian. On that note... Special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, and Daryl. Your support means everything, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.